And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Hand of Fate. All right, you bums. Move it or lose it. Watch your mouth, Kit Baxter. This is supposed to be a class joint. That why you're down here smoking with the chauffeurs instead of minding the door, Ryan? Don't tell me how to do my job. Lay off, Ryan. The poor kid never gets a break. She drops his majesty off at the Club Macaw and goes right out and runs his errands. What? He doesn't have somebody to pick up his mail? Sure he does, Tony. Me. Who picks up mail at this time of night? Neither snow nor sleet nor such and such. No stamps or anything. Let me see. Ow! That's a good way to lose a hand, Ryan. Uh, Lego, I didn't do anything. Not much call for one-armed doorman around here, is there, Tony? Kid, for Pete's sake, let him go. Uh, You know what your problem is, Baxter? What's that? You're crazy, that's what. Oh, is that all? That's why you're standing out here in the car park instead of in the club on some rich swell's arm. Don't be so sure. I think her boss be plenty glad to take her in there. But somebody's got to park that boat. Tony? (sighs) Don't you ever say that about the boss. And don't you ever, (sighs) ever talk like that about the car. Okay, okay. See? Crazy. Please. Please. Swell, here comes another crackpot. I have to find... June. June? You're late, pal. It's September. June! Where do you think you're going? I told you last time, the Club Macaw is members only. I am a member! My name is Isaac Farron. Sure you are, Pops. Uh, Now get out of here before you get hurt. Ryan! Don't start with me, Kit. My job is to keep bums like this out. I am Isaac Farron. Heir to the Farron estate! And I'm Little Lord Fauntleroy. Now blow! Leave him alone. Every bum's got the same story, Baxter. They all had millions of dollars and ruby-studded yachts once upon a time. Must find June! Just once, I'd like to meet a bum who got where he was by being crazy, lazy, and drunk. Now, I won't tell you again, mister. Blow. Ryan, lay off. Are you okay, mister? Please... Help me and I'll give you money, jewels, whatever you want. Just relax, pal. Now, how about some hot coffee? My treat. No! Get back! Okay, okay. You can't take me back! I won't go back! Hey! Hey, mister! Come back! <gasps> Look out! You're quiet tonight, kid. Still thinking about that accident in front of the club? I guess so. It wasn't much of an accident, though, boss. He just ran straight out into traffic. A suicide? No. He he was more afraid of something he saw. At first I thought he was running for me. But the more I think about it, the more it seems like he saw someone, or something, in the alley behind me. God, I wish I knew what it was. It could have been anything, Kit. Desperate times can lead any man to madness. He said as his driver whisked him home from his private club. You'd like me better if I was poor, wouldn't you? What? Oh, boss, I didn't... It's all right. If you were poor, who'd keep me in grapple guns and gas grenades? A good point. I tell you what. The reports you picked up from our agents around the city don't seem all that pressing. Your John Doe must have a family somewhere. Why don't we see if we can find them? Help however we can. Ah, oh, boss, you mean it? Of course. Did he say anything that might give us a clue? I don't know. He was just raving. He was in rags, but he said he was a member. The heir to the Farron estate. Well, you know how it is. The Farron estate? Sure. He said he was... Oh, Farron, Farron. Isaac Farron. Isaac Farron? That's not very likely. Isaac Farron died six years ago. Yeah. Like I said, he was raving. He kept on about how he was looking for June. June? Yeah, like the month. Or like Isaac's elder sister, June Farron. The estate passed to her when Isaac... Died the first time? Turn the car around, Kit. 
The Red Panda has a date to keep at the morgue. I hope you've got your costume on under your uniform. What'll you give to find out? Kit Baxter, behave yourself. <laughs> yes, boss. Ah, the city morgue on a Saturday night. Who says romance is dead? Quickly and quietly. What for? The only one here is Bert, and he's an agent. He's a very skittish agent. Remember, his boss, the coroner, shares Chief O'Malley's low opinion of us. How can I forget? 3B, here's the door. Mm. Uh, Kit? Yeah? Did Bert happen to mention which of these corpses was ours? <sighs> Swell. I haven't turned down this many sheets since I was a chambermaid. I'll start over here. You were a chambermaid? For about seven hours. What happened? Clientele got fresh. That's not likely to be a problem here. What exactly am I looking for? Uh, Caucasian male, probably mid-forties, looked older. He was unshaven, unwashed, and generally un-everything. Then he got hit by a truck. I don't know, how do I describe a corpse? How about the one that looks like Isaac Farron? Let me see. Red Panda, that's him. It certainly is. Let Bert know we've identified his John Doe. Then what? Tomorrow morning, I'll pay a call on June Farron. Tomorrow morning? What's wrong with right now? I wasn't planning on wearing the mask. I thought secret identities and superheroics don't mix. I know the family. And unless I miss my guess, this is going to hit June Farron pretty hard. <laughs> Honestly, darling, you're a dear to stop by, but it's really not necessary. Well, when I heard the news about Isaac, I was naturally concerned. And a little curious. Well, I... Don't be embarrassed. It's perfectly natural. But I assure you, I'm perfectly fine, and I don't wish to discuss it. Are you quite sure, June? You know, sometimes it can help to talk. It can clear the mind and relax you. Yes. To talk? To talk. I thought that Isaac died six years ago. That was... just what we told people. We wanted... to hide the family from shame. Shame? What shame? Isaac was... he was mad. Mad? Isaac? We hid it as long as we could. But he became more and more violent... It got so I was afraid for my life. We did the only thing we could. You sent him away? Yes. To... To Brockridge Sanitarium. Brockridge? But why so far from the city? There was the family reputation to think of. Professor Wallace understood. He... He understood everything. What? I... I shouldn't be telling you all this. It's all right, June. But if Isaac was supposed to be in the sanitarium, how did he come to die in the street in front of the club? Please. Please, darling. Understand. I mourned for my brother when he lost his mind. Now he's at peace at last. Excuse me, I feel quite unwell. I must go inside and lie down. Of course. How'd it go? I managed to induce her to talk, but she was still hiding something. I thought you had her hypnotized. I couldn't press the spell too much. No mask, remember? Well, you get more darlings that way. An hour ago, this was a fairly diverting little puzzle. Now I'm afraid it's becoming something much more sinister than that. Well, what happens now? I'm going crazy. Oh, boss, it's not that bad. I'm serious. And I'm confused. Home, Kit. With a few stops on the way, we've got to get you some new clothes. Now that I understand. If this Professor Wallace really does understand everything, perhaps he'd care to explain it to the Red Panda. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Dakota Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Miss... Please. It would make me so happy if we could refrain from using my name. 
I hope you understand. I do, indeed. The stigma attached to diseases of the mind are hard to bear, particularly for members of our finest families. I'm Professor Simon Wallace. I already told you on the telephone who I am and who my cousin is. Yes, of course. He's one of the city's wealthiest young men. I wasn't aware he had a cousin so lovely and so involved in his affairs. I've been away at school for some years and uh, traveling. It's terrible to come back and find my poor dear cousin in such a state. I'm sure. Uh, Naturally, the commitment process is not one to be undertaken lightly. I was assured through a mutual friend that I could rely on your discretion. Discretion is our watchword, miss. Uh, Why, within the walls of Brock Ridge, you will find the fallen angels of many a fine old family to whom coping with the outside world has become quite impossible. Here they spend their days in peace. But forgive me, peace does have its price. Money is no object, Professor. My cousin is his father's only child. Should he become incapacitated, control of the entire estate would pass to me, uh, according to the terms of his grandfather's will. His grandfather? Oh, I beg your pardon. Our grandfather. We were never close. Do you think you can help me, Professor? Perhaps, my child. I wish to keep your cousin here for a week or two for... Observation. Observation? But... It's important that we know if we are dealing with a case of true insanity or simple nervous exhaustion. And a period of observation will help to smooth the way for the eventual commitment hearing. I understand. Your cousin is upstairs? Yes. Yes, I'll just go say goodbye to him. Tell me, Professor, if it is a case of of true insanity. Are any of your patients ever cured? I don't wish to give you false hope, child. I'm of the opinion that insanity cannot be cured. The hand of fate elevates some men to great heights, and others it strikes down. It is not for us to judge. Thank you, Professor Wallace. Oh, excuse me. My fault. Don't concern yourself, child. That's Bailey, my chief orderly. Uh, Your cousin is waiting. I'll be long in a moment. Well, Bailey, I take it you heard all that? Some. The hand of fate dealt us some pretty sweet cards this time. You think so? Sure. He's quiet as a mouse up there. Looks like he's worn out from all the parties, and she'll pay whatever it takes to put him out of the way, nice and legal. I don't know. She made all the right noises. Can you help me, not can you help him? She even made sure there was no chance he'd ever be cured and wind up on her doorstep. If we take this one on at all, I don't know. What? It's too perfect. And too soon after Isaac Farron's escape. If you weren't so brutal with our charges, he wouldn't have run out into the traffic to escape you. If I weren't so brutal with our charges, you'd have a revolt on your hands. We can't keep them doped all the time. Why not? The serum keeps them placid. Keeps them from getting too lucid. Chances are most of them believe they are insane by now. And the brothers, sisters, cousins that sent them here will pay anything to keep their fingers out of the family fortunes. As long as we ask for less than they'd be forced to share. So what about our new guest? Observation. And be careful. When he realizes he's being railroaded, he might turn violent. And if he does? Start him on the drug. Twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girded round. <laughs> Boss! And Psst, there Boss! Were by Up here at the, the window! It's me! And here the <gasps> flying squirrel to Red Panda. Come in, Red Panda! And falling. Ah, brother, I knew this would happen. <gasps> Uh, You're not going to be obliging and come near the window, are you? Fine. I'll have to do this with the blowgun. I hate this thing. Gotcha! I wonder how long this is going to... What? Where? (laughs) Squirrel? 
Squirrel, is that you? Boss, you're a sight for sore eyes. It's only been a few hours. It's been four days. Four days? What's this dart for? Antitoxin. I lifted a vial of serum when I bumped into the orderly the other day. And you used it to create an antitoxin? Yeah, that's right. We've got an agent at the university that's one of the world's most brilliant biochemists, but I decided to do it myself. All right, I'm a little groggy. Doc Davis wasn't even sure the serum would affect you. There's about nine things with vile-sounding names in it, but apparently we're already immune to six of them. Dr. Davis would know. He gave us the immunity to our own knockout gas. That's probably why it came around so fast. So, what have you learned here? Enough. I was staying in character. I got indignant, and eight orderlies built like linebackers jumped me. No wonder Isaac Farron ran. Only eight? No mask, no superheroics, remember? Right. I hated this plan, remember? But wait, if you've been drugged for days, how have you learned enough? What's the point in observing a patient that's sedated that heavily? They're not watching me, they're checking your story. <laughs> they're trying. Your lawyer is giving them the runaround. Once they're comfortable enough, they'll make their move. Once they've asked for payment to have an inconvenient but otherwise sane relative disposed of, we'll have the evidence we need to shut them down and free the other poor devils in here. Yeah, that's a nice plan. Here's another one. Squirrel, I appreciate that you're concerned. Did I mention there's some nut running around town with a mask and a flying carpet calling himself the genie? There is? Two knights, two banks. A flying carpet? I haven't actually seen it. So you think I should get back to work? If it's not too much trouble. You could start by getting out of that straitjacket. Fine. I'll follow your lead. Come back in five minutes. I'm hanging on a wall outside a sanitarium. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? I have to dislocate both shoulders. I'll be back in five minutes. Bailey? Bailey, where the devil are you? Professor. Bailey, what's the meaning of this? Get back in the office, Professor. What are you talking about? In the office, now! What are you playing at, man? We've got to get out of here. What? I pay you good money to maintain order here. There's no more order to be had. And there's not enough money in the world to keep me here. Makes sense, man. What is happening out there? It's a revolt, Professor, just like I warned you. A revolt? Our guests have declined your further hospitality. We have to get out of here. You fool! I told you to keep them drugged! We did. We made a complete round with the serum. There must have been something wrong with it. What do you mean? It followed us. Twenty, thirty minutes after they got their shot, they were awake. Really awake. Some of them for the first time in years. Impossible! You're being hysterical! Do you have any idea what would happen if they got out en masse? If they told the people what happened to them here? That their own families paid to get them out of the way and stole their fortunes? They're getting out, Professor. It's just a question of whether they kill us first. You don't Come understand! On. Wealthy families like that, they'll never face justice. In the rush to exonerate them, you and I will be crucified. Now get your men together. I don't have any men anymore, Professor. You stay here if you want, but I'm going. You're not going anywhere, Bailey. What the? The Red Panda? How did he get here? I don't know, but he's leaving in a box. <laughs> Why are you shooting over there, Bailey? I'm over here. Or is it over here? What's happening? He's playing tricks with my mind, making me see him everywhere. Come on out and fight! I'm sorry, did I break your train of thought? I think you were about to call me a coward! Tell me to stop hiding in the shadows and face you like a man? Please, stop! Did you stop beating Isaac Farron when he said please? Is that why he ran into traffic to escape you? Free from the drug, he still saw you for the monster that you are. <laughs> now you. Please, I have done nothing. Nothing more or less than steal years of these people's lives, all in the name of greed. You're all traitors. You betrayed the sacred oath of medicine. Your clients betrayed the natural law of family. How? 
How did you... We replaced that devilish serum you used to control your patients. Replaced it with an antitoxin. Instead of wearing off slowly, leaving them confused and weak like Isaac Farron, it restored their faculties completely and left them angry and ready to strike back. Both at you and at those rivals for their family fortunes that betrayed them. What's going to happen to me? Nothing you don't deserve. Some men the hand of fate elevates to great heights. <coughs> Some men it strikes down. Hey! You didn't save me any! It was getting cold. Did you call Chief O'Malley? The boys in blue are on their way. Good. Help me truss up these two. We're leaving them? What about the inmates? That door should hold them long enough. Besides, it's justice they want, not revenge. Are you sure they can tell the difference? Are you sure you care? Good point. That was good work, Squirrel. Having Doc Davis synthesize enough antitoxin to bring the whole ward on side was a stroke of genius. Aww. I'm just glad to have you back. Even if you do need a shave. I think it looks rugged. I think it looks like you've just spent four days in an insane asylum. Fair enough. We'd better get out of here before the police arrive. I happen to know where there's a real fast car. Was O'Malley asleep when you called him? He was at the office. Hmm? This genie hit another bank. You don't say. I don't. O'Malley does. He also says that they've got everything they can from the crime scene, but I'll keep it locked down for a few hours if you and I wanted to take a look. Really? Mm-hmm. You think he's starting to come around? Or it's an elaborate trap? I'm up for either. What about my shave? Your razor's in the car. I'll try not to hit too many potholes. Let's go! And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 13, The Hand of Fate, was written and directed by Greg Taylor and featured the vocal talents of Scott Moyle, Stephen Burley, Peter Nickel, Denise Anderson, Andrew Mazzetti, Tim Vant, Clarissa Donetterlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night.